everyone, I'm Rita with Everything Homemade and we are going to can carrots. I'm going to take you step by step on how to do this. And normally I start with the very beginning, but today I am going to teach you from the end to the beginning. So I'm going to go backwards a little bit today and you'll understand why. So I've canned here 28 jars yesterday of carrots. And I want to go over um, how to label these jars. I'm going to go over how to test for that they're sealed. And then we're going to take these rings off and get them into cold storage. And then I'm going to show you how we can and how we set up for it. So Nova here, she's going to start labeling. Now it's really important to label your product that goes down into cold storage because if you think you remember what when you did it or if you have different kind of flavors, let's say you have carrots that are dill carrots or maybe you got spicy pepper carrots or whatever flavor you did them, they kind of all look the same after. So these ones are all the exact same ingredients inside. So Nova is going to take some painter's tape here and we are just going to label 19 for 2019. So she's simply going to write down the label and then we're just going to put it on the jar. Now, why don't I put it on top of the, the snap lid here? The reason is because when I'm in cold storage, it's hard to see the top of my jar. It's easier to see the sides of my jar and that way it's easy to recognize what the date is or what is in my jar. Now I like to use painter's tape because painter's tape is cheap and it comes off. It doesn't leave a residue. It's easy to get at and it, I can write whatever I want on it. It's not as pretty as the professional labels, but it doesn't really matter to me. It works really well. So Nova, she is going to do all of these jars. And what we do in cold storage is, what we do in cold storage is we actually take these rings off. And most people don't realize that you can take these rings off, but this is already sealed. That's the whole point. The whole point of these rings is to hold the snap lid down in your canner. And then when it's done, 24 hours of it sitting here, this is sealed. This isn't doing any purpose, but maybe making it look a little more pretty. But this is how you want to store it because in cold storage, these can become rusty and then they don't go on the jars as great. So what we do is we take all these off and you can notice that this one has some rust on it. But we take these off and this is how we store the jars. Now, bring the camera over here, Grace. How we test for to see how, how do we test to see if these are actually sealed? Simple, just run your finger down the top of each one and you should not hear this, um, it should not go up and down or, or hear this, this noise that, that it's not sealed and you can definitely tell if it's not. Basically, I go along and I quickly check all my jars just like this and they are 100% sealed. So Nova's gonna work at this and we're gonna move all these jars down to cold storage because this is where I need to put my new jars. We also use a towel, as you can see on top of my table, and this also protects the table because it's extreme heat of the jars on a wood surface is not good for the wood. And the jars are wet. And so putting a couple of t bath towels down, one keeps the, the hot jars off the wood and two, it keeps it from dripping everywhere. Okay, so let's go over here while Nova does that. Let's set the stove and everything up for canning. So if you take a look in here, I have jars. Now these jars here, are washed already with soap and water. They have been in the oven for 10 minutes under 200 Fahrenheit. 
and that sterilizes them. Now they're just, the oven is held at 170, which is the lowest temperature my stove goes. So it's 170 Fahrenheit and it's gonna keep them warm right now. So it's just holding temperature. So what's important with your stove top here is you need to get your canner on. Now I just put my canner on to medium high heat so the water is just warm. It's not smoking hot, it's just warm. If you have everything too hot and when you put in your jars that are lukewarm, your jars will crack. So I keep everything just warm until the final stages. So I put my basket I put my basket in the water and you notice the canner is just a little, that's about two thirds full of water. And that's just enough water there that we need because once you put the jars in, the jars obviously displace the water and the water will rise to about an inch over. So I have the canner on. What else I need? I need to have snap lids in here. Now my canner holds seven. So I need seven snap lids and the, we need to get water for that. So I'm going to put some water in here. Now I do a pattern with my snap lids so they don't stick together because I actually use a magnet to get these snap lids out of the water. So I put two where you can see the seal, then I flip the next two and then I do the exact same kind of pattern. So now I got five, six, and seven. Then I want to turn this on again to medium, medium high heat just so this gets warm. And then I'm going to just hold the temperature. You just want these to be warm. They don't need to be crazy hot. What you want is basically you want this rubber here to be nice and warm so when you put it on the hot jar, the rubber seals really good to the hot jar. So get those ready to go. The other biggest thing is the brine. And it is a simple proportion. It will go up on the screen. It's 12 cups of water to four cups of apple cider vinegar to a half a cup of honey and a third cup of salt. And this is a standard brine that I use for carrots that I would use if I can beans, um, red beets, cucumbers. This is the standard proportion and the standard brine that I use. So we're gonna get some water here first for the 12 cups of water. And I'm just using hot water here because you're gonna heat the brine up anyway, so might as well start with hot water. Okay, I need some more. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to fill the rest of this measuring cup with apple cider vinegar. Now, I like apple cider vinegar because it's not processed, it's not bleached or chemicalized, and this is 100% natural apple cider vinegar with its mother. It's actually unfiltered. Um, but you know what, the flavor, you wouldn't think that apple cider vinegar would taste really good with cucumbers or red beets or carrots, but in actual fact, it tastes really good because you're diluting it with water and you're add, adding other ingredients to it, and so the flavor gets masked. And, and like I said, you're not doing pure apple cider vinegar here. So we're going to do four cups of apple cider vinegar. Now you need to back up that way. Perfect. And we're gonna put it in the pot. Now we need some salt. 
Now, I like to use really wholesome ingredients when I make my brines. So take a look at that salt. You'll notice that it has all its minerals still in it. You see all the dark flakes? or speckles, that's all minerals. And when you're dealing with canning, I've had no problem using a good wholesome salt instead of the pickling salt. It's also less salty. So instead of using one cup of pickling salt, I can get away with a third cup of salt because this is like a sweet salt. And if you would use one cup of this, it would be so incredibly salty. And this is much healthier for you too. So let's measure out a third of a cup. For those of us who saw wood and hammer nails all day, can you please tell us what the mother of the apple cider vinegar is, please? <laughs> Thank you, my love. Answer the question. I will answer the question. <laughs> is apple cider vinegar with the mother? And the mother is the bacteria culture that is actually what makes the vinegar go vinegary. Okay? It's it's the culture within it and it's not it's unrefined, unpasteurized, so it hasn't been filtered out and killed. So this is real living vinegar. Back to the salt. So we're gonna measure out a third of a cup of salt, which is like that. A little bit more here, there we go. And we're going to put it into the pot. Now the last thing we need to do here is add in a little bit of honey. Now you can definitely use white sugar here if you want. You can actually use cane sugar. I really like honey in it and honey does just well into canning and what I'm actually going to do is just take my pot because it's not hot, get it closer to my honey jar. because you can see my honey is really re jar is really really full. Okay? So we're going to get that honey in there. Now, I want about a half a cup of honey and I'm going to ladle it in. So that's about a quarter of a cup. And one more scoop and we'll get to about a half a cup here and done. Now I use my ladle because I'm going to heat up this liquid and that way the honey on my ladle will go into my pot. So let's get this onto the hot plate and let's turn this on. This brine has to be hot. Now with carrots this brine is going to be, a, uh, it's going to fill about seven jars if you're doing red beets and you're packing them really good, this will do 14 jars and now I'm doing one quart jars. If you're doing carrots and let's say you've shredded your carrots and can pack your jars really good, then this amount will also do about 14 jars. But because I... But because I am not packing my jars down as great and I'm leaving my carrots more on the whole side, I use more brine for them. Okay, so let's go back here. So now I've got everything on, you guys. The the can cans in the oven are hot. The canner is on. The brine is on. This here, you can see the the steam. So I'm going to cut down the heat to two. I'm just going to hold it there. I've got the honey in now. We need to go over here and we need to set this up. This, is, this is, we need to get ready because this is what goes into the jars. So we're gonna take the hot jars out, we're gonna get all these ingredients in here. So now, what do we put in the jars? This is really, really important. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is this is horseradish. This is preserved in 100% apple cider vinegar and it sits in my fridge. Now you can have this sitting in your fridge for years. This, this will not spoil. But when we are dealing with our jars, I take some horseradish out 
and put it in here so it's just a little easier to transfer into our jars. And horseradish has the chemical component that keeps the carrots, or let's say you're doing cucumbers, or any vegetable, it keeps them crunchy. So this is awesome because you only need a little horseradish and the horseradish will actually keep your cucumbers and carrots crunchy. So that's why I use horseradish. I use horseradish also because it gives a little kick to the carrots. So I'm gonna put my lid back on here. The other thing is I've also used um, grape leaves. Grape leaves have the same component as the horseradish does and you can use grape leaves to keep your carrots crunchy as well. The other thing is, is I have pickling spice here. Now this is my homemade pickling spice. I have coriander, I have dill seed, I have mustard seeds, some cinnamon in it, some bay leaves, um, in here I also have some peppercorns and some allspice so this is my homemade um, mix a lot of these seeds I have grown myself so I put some of my mix again into a bowl so it's easier access now you can buy pickling spice almost anywhere also so the other thing is is dill now, if you take a look here, so if you take a look, this is dill weed right here. Now, you can use dill weed that is dried, like I'm going to use. The most common that I do use is actually fresh dill, and the reason why I'm not using fresh dill is because the frost came early, wiped the dill out before I was able to get to it. But I had tons of dill from a previous year that we had a bumper crop of dill. And so I'm going to use dried dill. And this is, has so much flavor in it because I dried it myself and it is just wonderful. So I'm going to get the, a good result. It's just I am not using the dill heads. Now with, with fresh dill, I normally use two good size of dill heads on the bottom of each jar. In this case, I'm going to use um, dill weed here. And, and this is not the heads, this is the, the leaf part. There, whichever the case is, it's, it's dill and it'll taste really good. So I'm gonna take some dill wheat out here, and then I have some chopped up onions. Now, sometimes I add in a, uh, some garlic too, which you can, sometimes you can add in some hot peppers. If you like a lot of kick, you can add in some peppers. Um, you can add in some, some dried peppers. Like, just, you know, you can also add in stuff that you really like. This is just what our family likes and what our family does here. So I have a spoon for this here and I just have an extra spoon. So we have this part set up. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to fill some jars. Okay, so whoop, you, we have our tool here. This is my magnet to get my um, snap lids. This is my funnel. We have, I'm just gonna move the honey out of the way here. We have some tongs for getting the jars out of the hot oven. We have these here to put the hot jars into the canner. And I'm missing one thing right here. And that is our, we need some lids. And we need some paper towel. Okay, so what I do is I take a piece of paper towel and I put it right by my stove. And this is where I put my jar, hot jar here, and I take the brine and I put it here. So one, it's just easy cleanup, and any drips, this absorbs really, really quickly. We got the canner set up, we got, we got um, everything going. What about the carrots? We need the carrots. So I'm gonna open this lid up. Now, we went in the garden, and these are all our garden carrots, but because of the horrible weather that we had, they're smaller, and so that's when we decided that we should just can them, because this size isn't very good for storage carrots. So you can see they're soaking in water, they've been washed, and that way when they're soaking, they don't just um, shrivel up. You don't want your carrots to shrivel up. You want them nice and crisp. So take a look at this, you guys. These carrots here are definitely crunchy, and that's what you want. 
So that way when the brine goes over, and you can, you always have crunchy carrots. Okay? So, this is really good. So I just held them in water overnight. Okay, so let's get these moved to the table. And this is a five gallon bucket. And so what I do is I put it on a chair so it's up to the level of my table. And I'm just gonna push it a little closer and you'll see why exactly why I did this. Now, you notice that maybe there's some other things on here. I may pull them out, but other than that, things look really good. So we've chopped the root off, we chopped the tops off, and some of the bigger ones we chopped in half. And, and so now these are ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna put my other half of my carrot off because I don't wanna talk with carrot in my mouth. So let's, let's do this. What I'm gonna do is get seven hot jars up here. Now this is totally different than making sauce, canning hot sauce. And this is why I'm going through this step by step. Okay, so we have seven jars here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put all the ingredients into the jars first. So I'm gonna do about, about a teaspoon of horseradish into each jar. Just like that, and obviously I need a little bit more. I didn't take enough out, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there, and then I'm gonna put a little bit in there. Okay, so that's my horseradish. And then I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of the pickling spice into each one. Just like that. Then I'm going to do the dill. And like I said, if I was using fresh, I would actually be using two big dill heads. And so this dill, I mean, I'm using a good size pinch of dill here, because we love our dill. So I'm gonna put that at the bottom. And I'm not worried about these jars cooling off. The whole point is for them to be nice and sterile and they will be warm. So when I put the hot brine in, they'll warm back up. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of onion. Again, some of this is to flavor. And when I'm discovering what I'd like in my jars, I sometimes do like 10 of each flavor and then I decide what my family likes if I'm canning something new. But because I've done this before, I'm just going to go with what we, we really like. So I have some onions in there. So that is 100% set up. Then we take the jar, and the jar is cooled off enough that I can touch it. It's warm, definitely. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back of my wooden spoon and I'm gonna start filling up these jars. Now I'm using a wooden spoon so I can move the carrots and I wanna get as many carrots as I possibly can in here to fill in the gaps. And my kids love whole carrots as much as possible because like I said, after this they are still crunchy. So they aren't gonna lose, I mean they'll be a little softer but they will actually still be crunchy. So I'm gonna get a little bigger ones in here. And this is what's nice because if you're always dealing with hot jars, filling up, you know, um, using, when you're filling up a hot jar, it's easier to get yourself burnt. And this way, the process that I use, you won't burn yourself. And it's a lot less messy. So there's a half decent jar. Oh, whoop, I'm going to just put a couple little smaller carrots here. And then... And then what I'm going to do is 
we're going to take this jar and Nova is going to head up putting the brine in the jar. So I'm going to concentrate over here. Nova's going to concentrate here. We're going to teamwork a bit. I'm going to guide her through this a little bit. So you're going to take the funnel and put it on top because this is Nova's first time doing this and she wants to help mom, which is no problem. And then she's going to take this brine, which is hot, and she's going to fill up the jar. Now it's good to use a funnel because the funnel keeps the mixture into the canning jar and it doesn't spill. And so I'm going to be filling these really close to the top. Okay? So like that. So even a little bit, if you take a look, even a little bit fuller than that Okay, I'm just gonna, there we go. So I just want it right at the top. As you can see. And then what you need to do, Nova, mm -hmm. is you need to take the magnet okay. and you put it, take it out of the water here. And then you slip it on top. And then you take a ring and you put, to screw it on but what you want to do is you need that extra oomph so I take either a tea towel or I take a pot holder because now you put hot brine in this jar so now the jar is hot you want to grab it you want to give that extra twist so it, it's on there then you grab your your tool here you lift it up nice and snug and you drop it into the canner just like so Okay, so that is what you're doing over here. You good with that? Yeah. So let's start here and then we're gonna go back to you. Okay, so now we're gonna do another jar and this is what I like to do is teamwork because somebody could be filling jars here. Now, okay, so I'm gonna fill this jar up. Like this, I'm gonna just kind of move, move this one around a little. So this is a really good way to preserve your carrots if they're really small. Now, normal, a lot of times if they're bigger, I put them in sand for in, in the cold storage, and I can get them to last about five months like that. But this year, like I said, between really bad weather, they just grew smaller, but they are super tasty. Carrots, absolutely delicious carrots. And drying them, well, you could dry them too for soups or stews, but my family favorite is canned carrots. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to give this jar to Nova. And now, Nova, you show them how it's done. Okay. Now I just want to say a big thank you to Grace. Grace is eight years old and she's filming this entire thing and I really want to commend her because her little arms are hurting right now because the camera is a little bit heavy but she's doing an awesome job keeping up and following along, aren't you? <laughs> thank you Grace. So Nova is filling that jar up and this is where, you know, Nova, you are nine, right? When you got six kids, sometimes I second guess myself with ages. And they can really help you in the kitchen. And it just depends on where you want them. Yes, this is hot, but she understands the safety and she understands what's going on. And they really want to take part in it. Perfect. Yeah, so that's good. So then you just put the funnel on the paper towel okay. and now you want to take the snap lid, right? Okay. okay, so as you can see what she just did was something wrong. She actually dipped it into the jar. So I'm actually going to rewash this lid 
And so what we want to do is make sure that when we get the snap lid, we take it from the top here and we go down because we don't want this snap lid getting dirty. Okay? Yeah. So now just grab a ring. Oh, and for some reason we've got it wrong size there. Okay, grab a ring. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Okay, now, yeah, and just hold on to, on to that. No, just leave it there. It's okay. Yeah, and just tighten it up. Very good. Yep, yeah, that's tight. Yep, yeah, awesome. And then just, yep, yeah, grab that. And now what you want to do is just make sure it's right at the underneath the lid here, right at that neck. That's your safety. Okay, so then you hold that tight. And then you put it into the canner. Okay, so back with these carrots. Zenova, go ahead. sticking out here we can either leave it or we can take it out to put it into the next one and that looks good yeah wonderful good job yep yeah. yeah you don't need to press this down because it's not actually sealed that's, that's, that, that canner will deal, do that. And yeah, get that lid on. As you can see here, as we fill the canner, you notice that I am on medium heat and that is just the temperature to make sure from, from when we get the jar in from Nova here and just kind of, like I can still touch these jars. Yep, just put that in. So when she puts these jars in, they're hot, but they're not insanely hot. And this is what I mean about working with about the same temperature. And this really increases the safety when you're involving children and that want to help is that everything's warm. We're not going to have a high risk of burning with things roaring and boiling. And then once she's got all these jars in, then we're gonna kick the heat up. But it is going to be a slow temperature change and no jars are going to crack. And this is how we can here at our house. And you can see I filled up the jars for her here and she is just now putting the brine on the last two jars. Okay, 
so she's got the last jar in. Now, this is really, really good, and I'm happy this happened because you can see our water level is, you know, just about to the top. But if you notice that we have this jar is a little taller than the rest of the jars, and it is not covered. So therefore, we actually need to increase the water in our canner so all the jars are covered. And that is very, very important. So Nova, why don't we get this measuring cup, we need about, there's about four cups, it's a four cup, fill it up with hot water. Okay. And it's really important that your jars are covered because that's what also helps create the seal. Yep, so just start pouring from the middle and you'll start seeing the water rise, obviously. Yeah, just go ahead. It can take it all. Wonderful. So now you can see that the water is over all the jars and that's what we want. So now the biggest thing here is we need to kick this temperature to max and we need to put the lid on the canner and we are going to reach this to a simmer. Once this hits a simmer, you need to turn it down to about, about medium high heat. So I'm going to turn it down to something more like this and that'll keep it at a light simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. So let's check our canner. So if you can take a look, you see the bubbles? So we're going to turn down the heat and like I said, this needs to be a soft simmer, a low simmer, not a roaring boil. So I'm just going to kick down the heat and I'm going to keep it there now for about 15 minutes. The timer has gone. I'm going to lift my lid. And I am going to turn off my hot plate and now I'm going to leave it for five minutes to depressurize and then I'm going to take my jars out. Now it's time to take the cans out of the canner and I like to use a tea towel and I just fold it just like this and what I like to do is I take my jar out. The first one will always have a little more water and I just lightly tip it and then I place the canning jar over the tea towel and I move it to my towel on the table. Now we moved all the canning jars, they're down in still cold storage, and now we're putting the hot ones on. And that way, I know I've said this before in other videos, but in that way, the water does not drip all over the floor, and the hot jars aren't touching my hand, and the hot water isn't on the floor. So it's just a safety measure also, as I have a one-year-old too that's crawling around, and I don't want a slippery floor and I don't want anyone burnt. There you have it. Wonderful. Canned carrots all done and you'll have to wait a month to enjoy them because it is important that the carrots have time to mingle with the brine. So wait a month, pop the lid open and enjoy wonderful crunchy canned carrots. Thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you on the next one.